partners today we look at the structure and bonding continuation of the previous topic that is uh, last time we look at metallic bonding and ionic bonding today we want to look at covalent bonds and coordinate bonds now so we start by covalent bonds Covalent bond is formed between nonmetal atoms of the same kind or different kind. Now it involves sharing of electrons between atoms forming the bond. Now in this case here, in this case here, each atom forming the bond contributes an electron to be shared. One pair of electrons is equivalent to a single covalent bond. Two pair of electrons shared is equivalent to double covalent bond. Three pair of electrons shared is equivalent to triple covalent bond. Now, when the nonmetals combine, it forms what we call a covalent compound. This covalent compound can either have giant atomic structure or symbol molecular structure. Now, for giant atomic structure, the compound now the compounds with giant atomic structure include silicon foxide, graphite and diamond. The rest of other covalent compounds will have symbol molecular structure. Compounds with giant atomic structure have got two properties. One, they have high melting and boiling point. Reason, due to strong covalent bonds between atoms which require a lot of heat energy to break. Number two, they are generally solid at room temperature. This is on due to strong covalent bonds. Now, compounds with simple molecular structure have the following characteristics. They are generally have low melting and boiling point. Reason, due to weak intermolecular force of attraction which require less heat energy to break. Number two, generally liquid or gas at room temperature. Reason again is due to weak intermolecular forces of attraction. Now we have two types of intermolecular force of attraction. We have what we call hydrogen bond and we have what we call van der Waal forces. Hydrogen bond is found in compounds in which oxygen is bonded to hydrogen, nitrogen, or chlorine. Examples of compounds with hydrogen bond include water, ethanol. Compounds which have hydrogen bond usually have high melting and boiling points. The reason is because hydrogen bond is always stronger than van der Waal forces. That is why sometimes we are told to give a reason why water has high boiling point than carbon foxide. You will say because the water molecules are held by hydrogen bonds which are stronger than van der Waal forces in carbon dioxide. Hydrogen bonds and van der Waal forces are usually shown using a dotted line. An example is shown below. The diagram illustrates the types of intermolecular force of attraction. Now, between this oxygen, atom, this oxygen atom and this hydrogen, we have a covalent bond. Between this molecule of water here and this molecule of water, we have what they call hydrogen bond here. Now, in this example number two, between this hydrogen atom and this hydrogen atom, we have a covalent bond. Between this molecule and this molecule here, we have what they call van der Waal forces here. Now, those are types of what they call intermolecular force of attraction. Now next we want to look at is how to use dot and cross to show bonding, to show how a covalent bond is formed. We want to look two examples. We want to look at oxygen molecule and water molecule. Now the first example you want to look at is oxygen molecule. Now the first thing you're supposed to do there is to write the formula of oxygen molecule, which is O2. Then your step two, you write the electron configuration of oxygen atom, which is 2.6. Then step number next, you draw two circles. Two circles.
so one for one oxygen atom then the other another oxygen atom and then after that we take these six electrons here i place it here six and then i place here six electrons then you say for atom to attain stability it has to gain two electrons so all these two electrons subtract from each of the six electrons so i say here minus two here i remain with four then here minus two i remain with four so those main remaining electrons are placed outside here so if i place here crosses four crosses i place here four dots so I place here the four electrons using crosses, then here four dots. Now these two electrons here and these two electrons here are shared inside here. That is you remove one cross here, one dot here. One cross, one dot. One cross, one dot. So that's equivalent to, to a double covalent bond shown as O double lines means double covalent bond so that is oxygen molecule now example number two is water molecule so for water molecule the formula is h2o the electron configuration of hydrogen is one hydrogen is one oxygen is 2.6 now because in the formula here we are saying one oxygen and two hydrogen so i place oxygen at the center i place here o at the center then i place one hydrogen on this side that is an h there's another hydrogen on this other side i place here hydrogen the one electron for hydrogen I place it here for and then I place one here then this six I place it here then I say for oxygen to attain stability is there to gain two electrons so I minus here two minus two I remain with four so these four electrons here are placed inside here so I place here so if I'm going to use crosses for oxygen then I have to use dots for hydrogen so the crosses, the four crosses will be inside here. Then out of these two electrons here, you place one here. And then you place one here. Then hydrogen requires only one electron to attain stability. So I cross this one here, I place here a dot. Then I cross this one here, I place here a dot. So the structure of this one here in terms of bonding will be O at the center. A single covalent bond then a single covalent bond on the other end so that is how you show a water molecule what you want to look at is called additive bond or a coordinate bond additive bond is a type of covalent bond in which only one atom forming the bond contributes a pair of electrons to be shared additive bond is usually shown using an arrow unlike covalent where it does a dash now examples of compounds which show additive bond include ammonium ion hydroxonium ion phosphonium ion carbon 2 oxide aluminium chloride dimer sulfur 4 oxide gas now in our example here we're going to look at how to show a dead bond in two examples ammonium ion and hydroxonium ion now we are told use southern cross to show bonding in ammonium ion the first thing you should do is write the formula of ammonium ion ammonium ion is written as nh plus now this ammonium ion is formed by combining ammonia molecule NH3 plus an hydrogen ion gives you ammonium ion. So the first thing for you to draw the to show the bonding here, you first of all draw this ammonia molecule. 
the ammonia molecule means it has one nitrogen at the center and three hydrogen on the ends three hydrogen on the ends so this one is hydrogen that is hydrogen and that is hydrogen now configuration of nitrogen this one is 2.5 hydrogen is one so these five electrons i place it here five this is one here this one is one and this one is one and i say for nitrogen to attain stability it has to gain three electrons out of the three i say minus three here. the two remaining now these two electrons that remains here i place them with the two crosses here then the three electrons that was supposed to be gained i place one here one here and then one here hydrogen has got only one electron i cross it i place it here i cross this one here i place it here and i cross this one i place it here then i say plus hydrogen ion hydrogen ion does not have electron it was having one so this plus means it lost one electron so i say here plus and hydrogen ion this one has no electrons so this hydrogen ion will fit here this this pair of electrons here so i draw i draw this one here then where there is a pair of electrons i place this hydrogen here so i place i draw the ammonia molecule the way it was i draw the ammonia molecule the way it was Then there were two electrons there hanging. So I place this hydrogen ion here. Then I place here H. Then I close the brackets because it is an ion. Then I place here a plus. Now that bond can be shown as N nitrogen. These are covalent. I place here an H. We have here a covalent bond here. And then we have here a covalent bond then additive bonds i say using an arrow then i place here plus now example number two we are told use dot and crow to show bonding in oxonium ion so at oxonium ion the formula is h3o plus now this ion is formed by drawing the water molecule plus an hydrogen ion with no electron i get h3o plus so the first thing a student should do first of all is to draw the water molecule water molecule is drawn as o at the center then hydrogen at the ends then i place one electron here one here oxygen is 2.6 i place six here then i say out of six electrons i gain two i minus two now the remaining four i place them here at the at the inside the oxygen atom then the the two electrons these two electrons here i place one here then i place one here then this one electron here i use a dot here this one here i place here a dot so if you look at water molecule water molecule has got two lone pair of electrons so if i say plus an hydrogen ion which has got no electrons has got no electrons this one hydrogen ion will come and be placed here or here so i draw here then water molecule the way it was i draw the water molecule the way it was H was there, H there, oxygen was there, two electrons there, two electrons there, a dot across, a dot across. This a nitrogen ion is either placed here or there. So I can place it here. Then I say hydrogen, then I close the brackets. Close the brackets. So that is what they call a dirty bond. So this is covalent, covalent dirty bond. The next lesson we're going to look at bond types across oxides of pyrite 3 and chlorides of pyrite 3 elements. Thank you.